A more accurate title for this video could be The Worst Ways to Die. But before we get into today's stories, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right channel because that's all we do and we upload three, four, even five times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please go over to the Like Button's house and ask to play Hide and Go Seek. When they are hiding, switch their regular coffee for decaf coffee and then don't seek them, just leave. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's stories. Nicknamed the Great Grey Green Greasy, the Limpopo River is one of Africa's largest rivers. It serves as a border between Zimbabwe and South Africa, and it also happens to be one of the most dangerous places on Earth. A town in South Africa called Falaborwa sits on Limpopo's shores, and all of its residents know they're never supposed to step foot inside of the dangerous waterway, but not all of their residents take that guidance seriously. On January 1st, 2010, Falaborwa resident Mariska Beitendog, along with her boyfriend and six of their other friends, had been out all night partying, celebrating the new year. They had had a considerable amount of alcohol over the course of the night, so as the sun was coming up, in their inebriated state, they decided they wanted to take an early morning dip in the Limpopo River. So they head over to the river, and while initially they all seemed really eager to get in the waterway, it was only Mariska that was brave enough to do it. So the rest stayed on shore and Mariska jumped in the river and jumped right out again. And she survived and everyone was very impressed with her. And so she's confident and so she does it again, this time going a little bit farther out into the river before coming back on shore. Now she's really confident, she's done it twice. And so she said, hey, who wants to come with me for a third time in? And the group said, no, we're still good and you really shouldn't push your luck, this is not safe. And she said, I don't care, I'm going in for a third time. So Mariska gets in the water and by herself, she swims out on her back about 15 meters away from shore. She turns and waves at the group and smiles before she is violently pulled under the water. There wasn't even time for her to scream. Her boyfriend immediately jumped into the water to try to pull her out, but he knew where she was and there was no way he was getting her back. The other nickname for the Limpopo River is Crocodile River. And Mariska, unfortunately, had fell victim to one of its apex predators. But it's not just drunk partygoers that fall victim to these crocodiles. Unfortunately for the residents of Zimbabwe, because of the extreme hardships they have to face, many of them have been forced to flee the country and cross over the Limpopo River to try to gain entry into South Africa and many of them will die trying. On April 11, 2014, Zimbabwean and South African police discovered this crocodile-infested cave right near where Zimbabwean residents will try to cross over the Limpopo River, and inside of this cave were the remains of 15 people that presumably tried to cross over and were caught by crocodiles. The discovery of this cave and the 15 people who lost their lives inside of it, while tragic and certainly gruesome, it only represents a fraction of the total number of people who have died trying to cross this river. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming is one of the most remarkable and beautiful places on Earth. Not only is it renowned for its biodiversity, which includes some incredibly resilient microbial organisms, it's also home to one of the world's so-called supervolcanoes. This supervolcano sits atop one of the world's largest magma bodies fueled by an upwelling plume of superheated material. This dynamic and violent subterranean plumbing means the water bodies at the surface the famous Yellowstone hot springs are highly acidic and incredibly hot. If you were to ignore the countless warnings around these hot springs telling you to stay away, do not go in the hot springs, if you were to ignore those and go in one, or more accurately, fall in one, this is what would happen to you. First, your body would register that your skin was bathing in waters exceeding 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This would hurt like nothing you can possibly imagine but it would only hurt as long as your nervous system was able to register pain, which would only be for about one minute or less. At this temperature, your skin would begin to quickly break down and disintegrate, and your blood vessels in your underlying dermis would rupture, causing rapid blood loss. Some underlying skin layers would not break down, but they would lose all of their water and become tough and blackened. And your underlying subcutaneous fat would bubble off as well. All in all, this is known as a full thickness burn, and it would occur in about one minute in these waters. Your nervous system would enter a state of shock and become irreversibly damaged, 
which would lead to most, if not all, of your organs to fail if the heat stress has not already done that to you. You would be dead within two to three minutes, and then at that point, the acidity of the water would take over. Within a few hours, your body, including your skeleton, would be completely dissolved into absolute nothingness. And for anyone who falls in but manages to climb out again before being dissolved, they are not out of the woods. Many of those people unfortunately will die hours, days, months later due to complications from the burns. On June 7, 2016, Colin Scott and his sister Sable went to Yellowstone to see the famous hot springs. The siblings were exploring the Norris Geyser Basin, which is the park's oldest and hottest thermal area, when they decided to leave the safety of the boardwalk and walk past all the signs telling them, do not leave the boardwalk, this is dangerous, turn around. They decided to walk past all of those and venture out off the course. They walked approximately 200 meters away from the path to the edge of a hot spring that was not really part of the main tour and they were just standing there when Colin apparently tripped and fell into the hot spring and his sister was just not able to do anything. She knew she couldn't go in after him and he very quickly sunk below the surface and didn't come up again. She ran back to try to get help but by the time they got back to the edge of the hot spring he was gone and in fact the only thing they would find of Colin Scott was his flip-flops. Since 1890, Colin Scott, along with 21 other people, have died by falling into these hot springs. There is a remote cliff face in northern England that rarely gets tourists. If you were standing in front of it, you would see this little stream that went into a break in the limestone. It's this little tiny hole, and that stream is called the Mossdale Beck. If you crouched down and walked through that hole, you would be entering the Mossdale Caverns, which since 1967 have been permanently sealed off to cavers. Once inside the Mossdale Caverns entranceway, you could look down and see that little stream, the Mossdale Beck, would be going between your legs, and then right in front of you, it would split in two distinct directions down respective tunnels. To the right, the water flows down seven miles of accessible passageway. However, most of it is incredibly tight and it's prone to flooding. As a result, fewer people have seen the far reaches of the right side of Mossdale Cavern than have stepped on the moon. To the left, the water goes through these impenetrable rocks that no one has gotten past. In fact, no one knows what's beyond these rocks. However, scientists have determined the water that goes left at the entranceway will reemerge 18 days later, five miles away, 900 feet lower in a pool called the Black Keld. The massive tunnel system that we know exists but has yet to be explored that connects the entranceway to Black Keld is referred to as the missing link. You would think cavers from all over the world would be clamoring to get inside that accessible side, the right side of Mostel Caverns, and try to find a secret access point back to the missing link to be the first person to discover that, to stake your claim and say, you know, that was me. But in fact, since the Mostel Caverns was discovered in 1941 until 1967, almost no one went in Mostel Caverns. Endless, tight, water-filled crawls with names like Drown or Glory made Mostel Caverns feel like too big of a risk to be worth it. But in 1967, 10 extremely fit, extremely experienced cavers said, you know what? We are going in Mostel Cavern and we are gonna find that entrance to the missing link. So on June 24th, 1967, these 10 cavers entered Mostel Caverns. They went right into the accessible seven miles of passageway and they began their descent. And it wasn't that long until two of the 10 cavers, the two least experienced of the group, said, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I've got a bad feeling about this, but we don't know the way out. And so they needed chaperones to leave. And so two other cavers from the group had to go with them. So four cavers, they leave Mostel Caverns. The other six are going to continue on. So when the four got back to the surface, it was about 5 p.m. They had been in the cavern for several hours at this point. And when they went in initially, the weather was great. It was beautiful. It was clear. Now they're coming out again and it had started to rain. Not significantly, it was more like a drizzle, but they were a little bit concerned because they knew the other six were planning to be in the cavern until after midnight. So they were just hopeful that the rain did not get any worse. But just a couple of hours later, the skies opened up and it rained like it hadn't rained in years. Just torrential downpour, and the four were really concerned about the other six. So they went back to the entrance hoping that maybe, you know, the other six would have heard the rain, although it's very unlikely considering how deep they were going to be. But they were hoping that maybe they'd be coming out again and they would see them and get them back to safety. But when they arrived there, not only were the six not out of the cave, 
but the actual entrance to the cave was completely submerged in water. Earlier that day, when the four cavers turned around and left, the other six cavers, they continued on, and they had made it about two miles deep into these caves. They had passed the fabled drown or glory swim, they had survived the knee wrecker passage, and they had bit their tongue as they squeezed through the famously painful Umaguli Tunnel, now located hours away from the only way out. So they are way into this cave. They were nearing the end of this distant section of the cave that they believed on the other end they would find this hidden entrance into the missing lake. All they had to do was pass through the Far Marathon section, which is a 900-foot tunnel that is only 10 inches high, 2 feet wide, and you have to wriggle through on your stomach with your face pressed against a stream that runs through it. And it takes a very long time to get through it. It's incredibly claustrophobia-inducing. It's considered one of the most stressful things you can do in caving. But considering how experienced these cavers were and the fact that they had come down there specifically to get to this far point in the cave, you got to figure that their spirits were high, they were probably joking with each other as they're doing this awful thing, and then they made it about three quarters of the way through this tunnel when someone must have noticed the distant rumbling sound and said, hey, what is that? And as they sat there listening, trying to discern what the sound was, it must have dawned on them that their worst nightmare was about to come true. That was the sound of surging water. This tunnel is about to flood. They began crawling faster and faster down the marathon tunnel. Not only was it very difficult to move quickly inside of this very tight tunnel, but they also knew there was nowhere to go. They're two miles underground. They must have felt like the world of sunshine and fresh air was suddenly an eternity away. The oldest of the group was 26. The rest of them were all in their teens. United now by fear, the water came rushing in as they're all pinned inside of the far marathon tunnel and their face is already up against the river and now this river is surging with water. And so they're all desperately trying to crawl through this flooding tunnel and the leader of the group, the guy literally in the front, John Ogden, who was 26, he managed to get all the way through the far marathon tunnel to the space where they anticipated finding that, that secret entrance into the missing link. That wasn't there, but he found above him, there was a small fissure in the rocks. There was an air pocket and he managed to get his head up into the space right as the water in the far marathon cave completely submerged. So any of the cavers in there, they drowned inside of the far marathon. The bubble that he was in was a little bit bigger. And so some of the cavers managed to get in there and they tried to clamber into this air pocket as well, but ultimately Ultimately, there was only enough room for one person and John was the only one up there. And so as the water levels filled the room he was in up to his neck, everyone below John drowned. Now we don't know if John literally kept other people from getting into this air pocket with him. All we know is it could only hold one person and ultimately John was the one who was left inside of this crevice. But this air pocket was really just delaying the inevitable because there wasn't very much air inside of it and John's two miles below the surface. There is no way anyone is gonna get to him in time. And so he ended up dying a couple days later and when they found him, he was still in the air pocket trying to get one last breath. What I've not covered in this story that I would encourage you all to check out is there was this incredible effort to try to save these cavers before anyone knew they were deceased. There was this hope that maybe they found an air pocket and they were still alive. And so they basically created this artificial dam that was very precarious. The water could at any moment spill over and it provided just enough drainage inside of this cavern for some of the best cavers in the world to go into the cavern to look for them. And so they went into this cavern knowing at any minute that makeshift dam on the surface could break and they will 100% drown in here no one's coming to get them. They had to crawl through the far marathon tunnel all the way down at the bottom to get to the lost cavers. And ultimately, when they discovered they were all deceased, it would have been impossible to remove their bodies. And so the decision was made to leave the six cavers where they died and seal off the cave permanently. So in 1967, they sealed it off and they now treat Mossdale Caverns like a gravesite and no one goes in it. So that's gonna do it, guys. If you found the secret in today's episode, let us know in the comments what it is and where you found it. So give us the timestamp. And if you're the first to do that, we'll pin you at the top of the comments section. If you enjoyed today's video and you haven't done this already, please go over to the like button's house and ask to play hide and seek. When the like button is hiding, switch their regular coffee with decaf coffee and then do not seek the like button 
just leave. Also, please subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly three, four, even five video uploads. If you want to get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter. My username for both platforms is the same. It's johnballin416. I also have a ton of content over on TikTok where my username is Mr. Ballin. If you have a story suggestion, please submit it to our subreddit just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below. So whether I see you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, or some combination, just know that I really appreciate your support. And until next time, that's going to do it. See ya.